Welcome to the MC10 um, com graphics tool. Um, I guess so I can show you basically how it works. This is one of the earliest ones. Actually, I think this is the earliest one. Um, it's uh, pretty basic. Um, click on one of the graphics over here. It only has one uh, character set out. Uh, that's all there is. Um, and uh, well, you can draw things with it. Whatever you want. And I will pause this for a while and draw something so you don't have to agonize while I'm drawing too slowly for you. Okay, back again here. Got a little more done. And with this tool, it's just really basic. It's, um, uh, you might ask yourself, how did I do it basically uh, copied the uh, fonts and edited them in the paint and then uh, and I noticed a while ago uh, after creating this that if you if you coat or surround say a graphic with and there's a flaw in that little font right there, but I haven't fixed it yet. Um, at least in this version. Now that that's totally surrounded by uh, a color, if you say have a CLS zero f or well, whatever black is actually, but CLS it so it's black, and then place that um, graphic on the screen, you can actually create an animation as long as you surround every animation with black that'll blend into the background. This gives you the ability to, to have twice the resolution on your regular graphic screens but every graphic can only have one color because uh, there's certain kinds of rules that won't be able to move. You, you could create a seam, uh, horizontal seam for, and have a different color but you could never go up or down in a in a smooth formation, if you have that, because it'll <coughs> uh, each block of four characters can only have one color in at any given time. So this uh, surrounding the uh, graphic with black kind of uh, makes it so colors aren't going to bleed together. It's like a think of it like a force field around your graphic. And uh, so far I haven't made any animations with it because right now this is a very basic uh, editor. Now, uh, so I'll show you what it does uh, when you're done here and you just click um, create strings and there it goes. It created simply the strings and, and it did it. It assigned the strings to actual uh, strings that is and there's flaws in the way it printed it out and everything so I'm not going to go and transfer it to the computer right now or am I let me see mm. Mm, no I, I don't think so so for one it doesn't have the positions it only has the characters and the way that it did put the positions is at the end here where I left it open you have to put a chr dollars 13 so it goes to the next line and then it, and then it straightens it out but still there's still a little problem with alignment there because this one will print wrong. So anyway, that one's I'm getting out of here. That's the first graphics tool, which uh, has a lot to be desired. Now we're going to go to the next one, which is the beta 0 0.5. And it looks about the same, but as you can see here, it has uh, it has the uh, whoops not far enough okay it has
has the added uh, character sets, which aren't really meant to be character sets, those green ones anyway, but it has a higher resolution uh, character set on this, uh, uh, the blue and red graphics which are on um, under if you go poke for 9151 comma 4 it'll show this screen I believe and so we'll go back execute our new graphics tool now this one has more features this one uh, you can show the grid and go back so this will allow you to be able to see better now if you're using um, let's say you're using uh, you have the height height grid in place and you have a whole bunch of uh, one color and you're like wondering where the line is if you, if you can't quite figure out where the lines are you can go show grid and it creates these lines that you can see now. Uh, this also has a clear screen and a switch font. Uh, although if you switch f if you switch the font right now, it'll create an impossible screen because it'll actually be displaying graphics that you can't display. I don't think I have it set up to clear the screen. So the best thing to do is to oh uh, that actually changes it to that color. If you uh, click the clear graphic. I think it was if you clicked A and you get clear screen. Yeah, it, it cleared the screen. So or at the at symbol. So I, I have it set up to do that. So the one symbol you can't actually fill the screen with is the inverted at symbol, which I don't think people are really gonna need that much anyway, but you never know. But so anyway, that's that. Uh, and then if you have some conflicting colors, like let's say you're working with white, um, you might not be able to tell where white starts and ends because uh, ironically the color of the MC10 uh, white screen is exactly the same color that's defaulted on an MC10 I mean excuse me on the visual basic form it's the default color so the MC10 uh, actually has something in common with visual basic 6.0 isn't that cool <laughs> who would have thought right I mean, look at that, it, it just matches perfectly. So, in order to be able to see that, I just click Change Form Color, and bam, it lets you see where the lines are. So you can see where you put those. Now, if we go at, we'll clear the screen, we'll get rid of my obnoxious yellow color, and uh, these are the ones that I created the uh, different uh, modes, I mean uh, the different animations that I created and some of them didn't finish um, because I wanted to create a, a tool where I can switch pages. Hold on a second. Okay, right now I'm just going to show you a quick uh, graphical thing that we can do. It's very easy. You don't really want to. You can make mistakes, but you'd rather not, basically. Um, I think I need this one. Then go down like this. And then let's pick black and hit clear screen. We'll try that again. I'm not sure if it'll record that or not, but it's okay if it does. Oh, we need the other one. This one. And this one. Then, oh yeah, see it's staggered. So rather than end up with that, because it's harder to do every other staggered like that, I will do a um, yeah, I'll do.
do the opposite graphic. This allows you to kind of think this, I believe this tool is uploaded to the MC10 uh, files area. So if you feel like messing around with it, you can download it. And if it's not there, let me know. Oh, there we go, perfect fit. So that lined it up good. Now I want to show you uh, if I say create screen, I must put in a let's see, you must put in a line number. So we're going to start with oh say um, we'll say 1,000. Create strings. And so, yeah, there that is. Now that negative one is actually a coordinate system that I created, which was, uh, if it's, no, create, create, sorry, negative one means uh, negative two, negative one. Can't remember, but there's different functions, basically. And then there's a coordinate system and different things like that that goes through the data. Let's see, add delay. And then, so now I actually don't use this one anymore. And again, I'm going to show you the next one. Hold on one second. Here we go. <coughs> okay, so now we've got, uh, this is the next one. I called it... Uh, beta 0.5 anyway, even though it is a newer version. And I kind of misplaced it, so I had to hunt, go hunt for it. Okay, so now this one has a bunch of features. But, all of them... T Ooh, I've got one more than this one, too. I think this is the one... I'm not sure if this is the one I uploaded or not. I don't think so. But, uh... Anyway, so this one's got quite a few features. I can change mode... Um, switch font. Let's try that. Takes a second or two. This is that other uh, font. And uh, right now we're in data mode. Um, there's an interesting feature on this one. is the for next. If you go, um, say like you take this one and you go for next and you go here to here, it fills the screen, so it doesn't do uh, any diagonal stuff or anything like that, but it does, uh, I'll show you here, it, uh, we, uh, clear screen, and we go, basically it's going to do a one directional thing, which is, you grab the blue, you go like that, Then if you grab red and click that once, there. I think it stops after that, I believe. I'm not positive. Yeah, it stopped. Double click erases the one square. And uh, now and you notice that the data is being written down here. Pretty handy. Um, you can also add the code to run your data. So th this one gets pretty easy to use because, um, let's see here. Now, let's say we do this one. Hit a four next. Go to there, to there, and then We'll say uh, this one, or maybe not. We'll go blue, huh? So I'll do the invert of what I did up there. Or next to there, and then the red. We oh, I see. We've got some more higher resolutions here. And the red for next from here 
to here. Okay, I'm going to pause it so you guys can see a bigger progress very quickly. Okay, so let's say you'd like this. If you like this, I think it's kind of cool, I'll show you how it's done. You click on um, a gra the graphic. You know, you know, a lot of times you're hunting for graphics on this thing. You're like looking and looking. So this is the one I want here because it's got blue on top and I want to put a black on top of that green. First I'm going to hit the 4 next, then go to there, to there. Then I'm going to look for the red on the bottom, which is this one. Click the 4 next, go from there to there. Now I'm going to pick a, another uh, green one. I'm going to go with number 1 because it has one line. And I'll go 4 next, and I'll go from here to here. And I'll click 4 next, and go from here to here. And then now at that top part, I think I'll just do this one all the way across in blue. And then the bottom, we'll do the same. 4 next here to here and then we'll do a red of the opposite from here to here there now what I'll do is to show you how this works uh, we'll add some delays and then we'll loop it all and then we'll add code to run data and then we right click on this select all um, go into uh, notepad okay now we're gonna go to the uh, go to notepad We're going to save this as the desktop. We'll save this as uh, save blue, red, stream, streams. 001, I like to do that. I guess I decided to make more. Okay, so let me just save that. We'll paste code in. Now you'll notice something interesting here is that it's ready for uh, quick type. So all we do, we hit save and we can. It doesn't even really matter if we exit this or not. Now we're going to go to our emulator. We'll go to QuickType. Go to the desktop. And blue red stream open, and you'll notice that it changes its order because it it's uh, was entered in different orders. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now we'll run it, and you know what's wrong with this picture is that it didn't change the mode of the screen first, and maybe that's my fault. But I'll poke it in. Poke four nine. 151 comma 4 run there you go cool huh he even remembers the first part I put in it's kind of a was an error <laughs> well, it'll just keep cycling around create some pretty unique screens with this thing here, I'll put it on uh, full screen. And that's.
That's having a tough time converting over. A lot going on. So it'll it allows you to do a lot that you wouldn't really be able to do on the MC10 because how would you even know you could do that? It's like a drawing, almost like a drawing program, you know. And uh, so anyway, what, what, what if you're still listening, you're here. What I want to do is I want to create a uh, graphics tool that. Uh, uses basically all 20 screens. That's my kind of objective, but you know, ain't it's not necessarily going to happen immediately either. Key sequence, which is on my computer, it's function F12. Okay, so is that what it always is? Let's see if it says that. It says F12, so in mine it's function F12. That's okay, so now let's see, what was I saying? Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Talking about those screens. And so because of that, uh, if we go in here to screen data, this is an earlier version, so bear with me. Opening up Excel, this basically shows all the different modes of the uh, MC10's video modes. Uh, so we have um, basically an internal font and an external font, uh, semi-graphics mode and another semi-graphics mode, and uh, CG1 and a RG1 and RG2, RG2, or I mean CG2, RG2, RG3, CG3, CG6, RG6, and RG4. But there is actually, I'm not, I don't think there's an RG5. I think it was an error on here. Okay, I'll show you the updated one. I think I'm going to have to pause it to find it. Okay, I'm back. And here is screen data 3, which is pretty interesting. Because it takes into account the, uh, graphics tool. No, this one doesn't. <laughs> oh, I'm looking for screen data too. Okay, this three. What I did is I, I put down all the screens in order. So uh, right now this is not finished because it has there's five, I mean four screens that have 512k each. And there's four screens that have 1024k each. There's two special screens that have 1536 bytes each. And there's two screens that have 2048 bytes each and four screens that have 3072 bytes each and four screens that have 4096 bytes. Okay, I'm going to pause it again to find that other file. Okay, here we are. I found it. Screen, t screen data 2. Now this is a good Excel file for uh, what I need to do. It's going to make these things easier in time. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I believe more of the information is uh, up to date and correct. Um, first of all, this first, very first screen where there's only black and white shows a number of things. It shows that this is an external no, this one's an external font, internal font uh, semi-graphics 4 mode and semi-graphics 6 mode. There's four screens. They all have 512 uh, bytes apiece. Now, those are bytes wide. They're all 32 bytes wide. 
Okay, so then the next screen is a CG1 screen, 64 by 64. Actually, it's uh, showing the color, the font screens first, color graphics screens next, and then the uh, mono graphics or black, white, dark, dark green, light green screens. So uh, it doesn't show all the screens, it just shows all the modes. And now for this particular thing here, this shows where the system data starts that's in our way and irritating us and on our high-res graphic screens. It's, and it goes actually, you might think it goes and stops before 17221, but it does not. It goes all the way through with a buffer. And it, sometimes it actually needs that buffer. And sometimes the system will lock if you don't include it. S uh, 17222 starts the beginning of um, basic, um, if you write a line, you know, like 10 print, it's stored, it's first place to be stored is that 17222. Total system is the length of that uh, 16895 through 17221. So eventually, when I get to my graphics tool on the high res screens, I am going to execute from BASIC, we can execute a machine language subroutine after BASIC's move to a higher level past all graphic screens, which is 20480, I think, but something like that. It's, 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 it's a ways up there. And uh, so it's, it's past that, about 3K past that, I think, because i got to leave room for a program, a uh, machine language subroutine that takes care of all the uh, special graphic functions. So anyway, we'll move the 327 bytes past uh, the visual screen and those will be buffered there. A machine language program will execute and uh, and it'll, it'll ha you'll have a blank screen when you get there and then and then it'll go to some instructions and follow them placing whatever you want on the screen, um, pausing, do, doing keyboard weights, uh, printing texts, and letting you make choices, things like that. Okay, so then then after that's done and you've, you've, you've uh, completed that little subroutine, it, once it exits, before it exits, it'll put basic back and it'll then return to basic without disruption. Um, Moving basic, yeah, that repeats that again. And the screen is 16 bytes wide. Okay, so now this next section is you've got your poke 49151. It tells you what the poke is going to be 32, 40, 36, 44, etc., and so forth. Now, the first four screens are color. And in this particular instance, they are in uh, CG 1, 2, 3, 6 order. And same with the next preceding screens, slowly increasing in value up to 124. And it's got the black and white screens kind of put together. And um, the colors, uh, like green, is placed, if you have all your color screens uh, have four dots per byte, and those four bot dots can display four colors. And each color is made up of two bits within that by, uh, byte. Every two bits, like zero zero is green, zero one is yellow, one zero is blue, and one one is red. And any combination that you want to make, you just combine those, and it's pretty easy to do. Now with the dark green and the light green screen, <coughs> it's pure zeros and ones, and uh, well, I might have to verify if uh, dark green is zero. I think it is. I think it is. But anyway, so then the next black is zero. So you'd think dark green, dark green would be zero. Anyway, uh, and then the 
the two different color graphic screens are interesting. The second one has white, blue, purple, and orange. Okay. And I didn't go by their technical colors, I just went by what they're close to. Now the next section, we've got, uh, let's see, what, what is the matchup about this? I was matching screens by width. So in this case, we've got two color screens that are 16 bytes wide each. So my code, if it knows that we've got all these screens, will have to modify itself or or be able to interpret the 16 bytes wide to display those uh, fonts that I like to display. If you've seen my other screens, um, eventually I plan to incorporate the font placement onto these high-res screens. And that'll help to be able to place like text or scores or whatever. Okay, now next is the uh, black and white or dark green light green screens. Uh, and you'll notice that they are also 16 bytes wide. Next one is a higher resolution. The 4K with the repeated screen on top and bottom, I've got some special plans for those. And then, uh, so well, the only combinations on this screen is not actually 0, 0, and 0, 1, but 0 and 1. And uh, same with the, wait, no, not this one. This one's color, so that should be... I should have removed that text down there. I'll get it later. Okay, so then, down on this very last one, we've got a bunch that have 32 bytes wide. All of the screens that are 32 bytes wide. Now these, I can use these even now because, well, including... Well, the, 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 the black and white screen and the dark green and light screen don't work as good um, because of the bit. You can still read it, but it's not as good until I create a modifying code to help that. So for now, with the code, the way that I've got it for printing text on the screen, these six screens would work right now. And so, anyway, so that's the nifty screen there. Here's some other tidbits of information. Um, a, collective, a collection of information for doing useful things. Moving basic is these pokes here. If you hit new, it makes that initialize, uh, and it just gives some more information here. You can pause it and check it out if you're interested uh, about how I plan to move uh, basic. Um, the most advantageous place to move the graphics buffer system areas to, if you oh yeah, if you plan to use all 20 screens is. 20480. It's going to use more memory though. And oh, yeah, and that back on that other screen here. Well, I'll show you in a minute. Clear screen. Okay, this is more functions that I'm planning. Uh, that, you know, in this, in this graphics tool that I'm planning on making, you're going to click something, it's going to create assembly code, and then you're going to just load it. You'll save it as a text file and then load it into TASM and then. Uh, do a few steps and it'll create your own little machine language subroutine just by clicking on graphics in the graphics tool. So that'll be cool because you don't have to know anything about assembly. Okay, so then over here, oh, I don't have them in. Uh, sorry about that. Let me see here. I have it written in my hand, but uh, if you use a 512 byte screen, with the with the three K subroutine that does these uh, machine language uh, uh, functions, you would have about sixteen thousand four hundred and fifty four bytes free, approximately. Actually, there's a little more than this, but uh, and then if you use a smaller program to do the job, you'll have even more memory. So, but the smallest amount of memory you'll have is about twelve thousand. Um, 358. I mean, that's not too bad considering you're talking about a 4K screen because when you use the 4K screen you're automatically your uh, 19,526 bytes that you get when you have the extended uh, 16K in your MC10 automatically get subtracted by 4K. Um, actually not 4K. You know why? 
because the 512 is already accounted for. So we'll say 3.5k. So that's a good point that uh, it ends up being a little bit cheaper because of that, and that's a good deal. Okay, so anyway, now back to um, something else I need to show you. I found something, and I'm going to pause and get there, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now, here's the beta version of uh, my graphics tool, 0 0.93. I knew I had a newer one. Um, not sure what this one is up here, but I'm going to go into 9.3, and we will try to find, see this one is still written in Visual Basic, I think I compiled it once. No, that's the old one. Uh -huh. Visual PV project. Yes. Okay, there's a lot more in this one. Run. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So, if you can see right here, I had planned on making it so I can go page forward, page back. Uh, display the current screen. Play the sequences so you could see it. Go back and forward so you can correct animations and everything. But, uh, I, got, uh, I haven't had enough time to actually make it work properly. And I actually had in keys involved where you could actually put a key and connect it to and just a bunch of stuff. It, it's not in assembly yet, but um, it was uh, working. First, we're going to run add code to run the data. Then I'm going to show you something special here pretty soon. Um, switch font. Just kind of studying this out. I will show you uh, mode. Uh, I think I'm going to stay right here for a minute. Mode. There's a zip mode, a for next mode, another for next mode. This one is um, up and down, so it's more. It's an advanced. Let's say you want to do an arrow, and you go up like this like this and you can actually go uh, I'm not sure if it'll record direction but you can go like that and like that yeah it does record direction so it actually uh, s knows which way you want it to go and it duplicates that on the MC10 so let's go now we'll switch our mode to a diagonal which will run that from say like here trying to do it to here and it doesn't quite line up that's okay because uh, it's going to do totally diagonal no matter where you click. So then we click mode. That's just straight out poke mode. Let's say we put some, uh, just a couple there. We'll go back to the for next mode. And let's see if it remembers uh, direction. I'll start, say I'll start here try to get a little more accurate of where it's going to go and it goes to there. And we'll say we'll start here and it goes to where? Here. Yeah. So then now if we go mode uh, let's see for next. Okay so now what we're going to do is we'll do some for next stuff. There's one. Two.
make sure you change it to uh, you can also put delays in if you want it to go slower I'm missing my oh that's 4 next it's that one you notice the little the little font right here shows you the angle so I was trying to say well how am I going to figure out which 4 next it is and that's a function uh, that would be got to go to the up and down one. This is the up and down one. It, it'll rem it knows either direction. So and now I'll c I click create strings. Bam, and it should be down here. That doesn't look like enough data. So. Anyway, gives you an idea of what I was trying to do. I'll show you what's not working right now too. Uh, if I go, I click next, click uh, play. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, uh, before I broke this program, it was even better. Hopefully I go back in and make some of these features that I added work, get some time to put into it one day. And uh, I think that's about it for now. Let me think for a minute. Do another pause. After these messages, we'll be right back. Okay, yeah, I have returned, but I will um, make another one. And you can pr try to get some more stuff done and upload some more video. This one is a pretty long video, so I don't know if anybody's going to sit through this whole thing or not. But till next time, hopefully you download the MC10 tool and tell me if you want a better one. May I have to go check that out myself. All right, see ya.